What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. Today we're going to talk about salts. I'm going to show you the bad way. We're going to show you the good way. Oh, it's 90 degrees and I'm drinking hot coffee. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness. Jesse Warden. Here we have a list of users in a database, but we don't want to show their passwords. So we're going to loop through that list and hash them out using the SHA-256 hash, which we've shown you before. We're going to go through this list of users accounts, each one of their passwords. We don't want to store that. We actually want to hash those. So we're going to loop through this array of accounts. We're going to hash this particular password. And then we're going to take that whole JSON object and convert it to CSV, which is just a string format that makes it really easy to paste into Excel. You'll notice that it now hashes our passwords. And I can copy and paste this Excel here, in this case, Google Sheets. But you'll notice a problem. The good news with hash algorithms, same input, same output. The problem is many users have the same password. So the same password results in the same output hash, which means a couple things. Number one is that although when the hacker steals this database, they don't get the user's password, right? They can't copy and use this on another website because that's not my password. It's .cal though. Good news for them is that they only have to solve some of the hashes. So a lot of that, if you remember that password list we got, this gigantic 15 gig thing from CrackStation, you can get a a lot more of these. Some of these are actually pre-hashed because you're using known algorithms. So not only do they have to solve some of them to get all of the passwords in the database, because many users reuse the same password and use the same tools to generate passwords that are not always that random. But secondly, a lot of those hashes are a lot faster for them to crack because it's a known algorithm of SHA-256 and all the other ones. How do we solve those two problems? We solve it by using salt. Right now, this SHA-256 takes that same string, whichever that password is, but there's no randomness to this. So let's add some randomness. We're gonna create a salt here and it's just a random string. And the point of it is, is to have a different input to result in a different output. We're gonna add it right here. So whenever they try to get a password out, we're gonna go ahead and add that salt inside of that function. We're gonna hard code it. And this is bad for a couple of reasons. I'll show you why. Copy and paste the output, format it. The good news is completely different hash. So if they have all the common user passwords in a password file, or somebody has taken the time to already hash these with known algorithms, they're not gonna equal these. As you can see that Lucy's is very, very different from here. It's a very different hash because the salt I created is in there, right? This big old salt with this whack emoji. The downside is that you still have Lucy and Spiky still have the exact same hash and that's still a problem. So once they hack your database, they most likely have hacked your source code and have the salt. So they can expedite how quickly they do that. And therefore they don't have to hack your entire database. That's really, really wrong. A lot of tutorials will say, use the same salt for your entire database and creating users and that's wrong. But what you instead do is we'll show you in the good salt is that you take this salt and you randomly generate it for every single user. So each user gets a brand new random salt that has nothing to do with another user's. And because it's the same input, same output, they're always gonna get a different input. So they're always gonna get a different output, regardless if they have the same password. It'll give us a big old string of numbers, just like a hash, but it's random. And we're gonna use that by adding it to the actual password. Once we add it to the password, we have a completely different input even if the passwords of two users are the same. We're gonna then store that random salt. So if somebody needs to log in later, we can retain that salt from the database and then say, okay, what password did you give me? Take the salt, does the hash match? What's in the database? Yes, great, you're the same user. If not, nope, not gonna accept that actual attempt to log in request. That's how you generate a random salt. You add it to it and we'll go ahead and run it out. You can see now that we have our passwords again, but we actually store the salt with that particular user. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these out. And now you'll notice that Lucy and Spiky Tiger have completely different hashes, even though their password is the same. And all these hashes are not the standard output of taking a password and running it through SHA-256 because they're different inputs for every single user. And those actual salts are stored off to the right here. You can't really see it in this copy paste, but over here you can see that the salt is stored with the user. So if they need to log in again, that's how you do it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use salts correctly when you generate them using real random numbers, real entropy from the system, adding that to the password so you have a true random input, even if you have the same input for passwords, the salt's gonna be different. So you're always gonna have a different output. And then if the user needs to log in again and need to match the passwords together, you store that salt with that particular user. So when they go log in again, you can take that salt, rerun the algorithm with whatever they're pasting in and get the same hash.